Welcome back to Daybreak Africa. Good morning once again. The topic today, endometriosis, its awareness and its solution. Uh, yes, at some point we'll be tempted to say it's more like a girl's topic this morning. So the men will probably just want to excuse themselves. <laughs> I, I think the boys, the boys, the men should really sit down to and really educate themselves because you have no idea whether tomorrow your daughter, your niece will probably tend to suffer from this disease and mm. you will just know exactly what is going on. So please, I want to join you guys to really mm. sit down with the topic both for the ladies, both for the men, so as to be a better enlightened. It's a family and topic. Family topic, that's the word, a family topic. Uh, so uh, we have Dr. Already seated, Dr. Modupe Odo Busayo in the house with us this morning once again. Welcome on the show once again, Doctor. Thank you very much. And I really want this opportunity to really appreciate you for always uh, coming on for Captain <laughs> TV whenever we call you. It's part of your busy schedule. <laughs> it's that you're traveling out of the country, you're coming back here. But once we call, you always find time exactly. for us. And thank you for meeting us once again uh, this yes, morning. We appreciate you. It's a pleasure. Brilliant. Yes. So uh, when I did the intro, I started early in my family. Um, we get matured very early. Um, there was a situation where an aunt at nine years was already a woman. For me, at 10 years, I was already a woman, and that trend has continued in my lineage. At 11, 12, in fact, by eight, I was so matured. When I was in secondary school, my first class, some people thought I was in my final. That was how, that's how mature uh, we get in my house. But during that period, I suffered basically in my course of this interview, uh, research, every symptom that uh, you know presents with um, this endometriosis uh, uh, condition. So today we want to create an awareness. Um, we will want to start with an overview. You know, as a medical practitioner, we want to start with an overview so people at home will understand what uh, this big name um, is endometriosis. Um, it is a painful condition that often affects the ovaries, fallopian tubes, and tissues lining um, the pelvis. So we would appreciate if you give us an overview before we delve deeply into what it is. Okay, yeah. So endometriosis, um, let me start. The lining of the uterus is called endometrium. Uterus is the womb. And you, you know, that's what is shed during menses. So it continues early being shed, and new one keeps coming up. And so naturally, you expect that lining to to only be in the uterus. So when this lining or an endometrium like cells find their way out of the uterus, that is where what is called endometriosis. So it can find its way to the fallopian tube to the ovaries, to the bladder, hmm. even on the surface of the peritoneum. And that is what is called uh, endometriosis. So how does this mm. affect the woman's body? Mm. Now, because that cell, the endometrium-like, is found outside the normal place. So it also responds to the hormone, the interchange that happens when a lady or a woman is to see his menses. So there's response in the womb, there also responds in the other places these cells are. And so, once that happens, then they present with the barrage of symptoms that are caused with endometriosis. So it keeps, it can actually move and just begin to appear in different parts of the body. It depends on how, you know, 
the truth of the matter is that we can't say mm. this is the particular cause of endometriosis. But we know it occurs. There are a lot of theories. Well, we can't say particularly this is the known cause. For example, one of the possible, uh, possible theory is that the cells itself undergoes transformation by itself to the endometrium-like cells. That's a theory. There's a theory that also believes that it is through, um, probably through blood or through uh, lymphatics that the endometrial cells, you know, blood get to every part of the body. That somehow that endometrial cell gets into the blood vessels because blood gets to all parts of the body, the endometrial cells now get to a particular place, it gets deposited there. It becomes endometriosis. That's another theory. Mm. There's also a theory that I believe they call it retrograde uh, menstruation. Nas naturally, you expect the menses to, to flow out. To, to flow out. But it's it's not, yes, it's now flowing up, getting into the tubes and some getting into the ovary. These are all theories, mm -hmm. but the truth is we can't say categorically this is a known cause of endometriosis. But why does it cause pain during menstrual cycle? Uh, yeah, because it is not in where the endometrial cell is not in where it's supposed to be. It's not only pain, there are other things. For example, if it's located around the rectum, then there will be severe pain when defecating. Mm. If it's around the urinary bladder, there will be severe pain uh, when urinating. So it depends on the location. location. And so if it's in the pelvis, then of course you have severe pelvic pain. Like in my own case, um, starting at 10 years, uh, to see my period, it was, my skin would turn red. I wouldn't be able to go to school for like three days during the period. I had heavy flow, pelvic pain. I had to be, the, the, my family would position me with like five um, hot water bottles to alleviate the pain. Sometimes it doesn't work. I'll be on the floor rolling. Then I have, then I'll keep stooling, which is something I discovered. So I was like, oh, doesn't mean all that. Why? Because I was never taken to the hospital. Why? Because my mom said she too had the experience until she had started having children, then it stopped. So would you say that was what I was going through? No. You know, one of the symptoms of um, endometriosis is painful menstruation. But it's not the only cause of painful menstruation, that which we call dysmenorrhea. Mm -hmm. Dysmenorrhea is either primary dysmenorrhea or secondary dysmenorrhea. So most of the time, I think what you add then, of course there was no diagnosis, mm -hmm. it's primary dysmenorrhea. And most of the time is due to increased prostaglandin that causes it. And that's why for those people, by the time they start bearing children, they don't experience dysmenorrhea. But if you now have, if you have been pain-free menses, and you now develop a fresh painful me uh, menstruation, that's what we call secondary dysmenorrhea. One of the commonest causes of that is uh, endometriosis, even fibroid, or even adenomyosis. Hmm. 
Wow. So you plenty. <laughs> so I think you mo you probably add primary dismenu rear then. Mm. Yeah. It was really terrible. Yeah. One of the worst memories of my life. A lot of people, a lot of ladies, and so because of the experience, the mother will tell you when you start giving birth, you won't mine will come with nausea nausea after um uh, discoloration of my skin hot temperatures i'll be sick all through i wouldn't eat i wouldn't talk to anyone i'll get so cranky in fact it was it was it's an experience yeah. uh, best um talked about and not even and seen. but now you know it's it's not that people still don't have primary dysmenorrhea but now because there is an understanding about the prostaglandin that is causing it. So most uh, doctor, I, I try as much <laughs> as possible not to cause your train of thought, but the more you do, the more I'll probably get lost. Uh, what is postglandin? What is what is this menorial? No, he wasn't explaining it. He wasn't explaining it. He was using those terms. And you use the term very often. I was what is this menorial? What is painful menses? Painful menses. This menorial. What did you say, so doctor? What is that? Is painful menses? Okay. Painful menses. All right. So what is primary painful menses? We say it's primary because there was never a free period okay. yes. that the person was not suffering from painful menses. And secondary? <laughs> secondary, that there were time before now, there was no painful menses. Now developing painful menses. Okay. That is caused by something. That's why it's called secondary. You know, I have a connection with my audience. When they're not really understanding it, I tend to feel it. So I knew, I, I knew. The boy is out there. I really don't get in this. Because you are a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See the so, way Ezekiel screamed. I mean, he almost jumped out of his chair. Like, what you give me money here? You give me time, I mean. <laughs> well, I then the doctor. prostaglandin, they are just chemicals <laughs> produced by the body. By the body. That causes so much yes. pain. Why don't we use the terms instead of the medical terminology? No, prostaglandin is the standard. Because if I want to treat it true, I'm going to give an anti-prostaglandin. So that's what I was talking about. Now, the knowledge... There's is, awareness. Yes, now. awareness. Okay. Now, so that's why you notice ladies now don't... The pain is not as terrible as before. It's not that they don't... Because... Before it starts, they will have used something mm. anti prostaglandin To normalize. W to normalize. So they won't feel, because that we control the prostaglandin. Mm. That's the chemical the body is producing, mm. causing it. And so they live virtually near normal, no, normal when pain. they are having their menses. Okay. Uh, so what then becomes some of the symptoms, basic symptoms of um, endometriosis? endometriosis? Yeah. Pelvic pain. And most importantly, when they are having their menses, no, 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 terrible. Then now again, depending on the location, hmm. it can be anywhere in the body. If, for example, that endometrial lining is on the rectum, that's where we pass feces. Then there will be painful defecation, and most of the time, it will now be now be linked. To around the menses. That period. Yes. Because, yes, we know that lining, which we call endometrium. That's where the endometriosis got its name. The lining hmm. of the uterus is endometrium. So when there are hormonal changes, there are a lot of hormonal changes in a woman's body mm. and that is what communicates that they are they see their menses and so now that lining is in the uterus but that same lining is in another place that's double so as the body as the uterus uh, the lining in the uterus is responding to the hormone the lining outside the uterus is also responding. And so if it's around the rectum, that's where uh, we defecate, 
then apart from the normal pain with menses, all these things, we also be having pain then. around the rectum. Hmm. So, and the simplest way is when you defecate, normal is not that the stool is hard, or is giving you problem, you will still have pain. And if it's around the urinary bladder, that's this with urination. When you want to pay, there's no infection, there's nothing. And what you always notice that it's always linked to mm. around the menses. Wow. Of course, we can have constipation, mm. bl uh, bloatedness, <coughs> nausea, all these things. So how is it then and diagnosed and what tests and procedures are involved in, in this? And probably before we get to that, let's just talk about the family uh, the, the risk type? factors, no, risk factors, risk factors. Okay, risk factors. Let's talk about risk factors now. Risk factors number one is family history. And so, if your mother, yes, oh, okay. if your ma mother, and so that's why one of the theories is genetic. If your mother suffered from endometriosis, you are likely going to suffer from mm. endometriosis. Two. Early, menic, early menarche, I will explain that. When you start your menses very early. So, probably your own case could have also been endometriosis. But why I'm not con uh, convinced? convinced I said endometriosis is that you didn't probably take any treatment. Mm. And you get, if it's endometriosis, you may have to take treatment. Mm. So early menarche and late menopause, those who have delayed, you understand, now in 40s people start uh, stop seeing their menses. But if it's late to 50, late uh, to 60, 60, 70, yes, they are also at risk. When the menstrual cycle is short, less than 28 days, it's a risk factor. When the menstrual cycle is long, Wahala. it's also a risk factor. Hmm. Those are the possible. What about estrogen? What yes, high level. Yeah, high you know, high level of estrogen is, hmm. of course, is a risk factor. Why, Mind why, you, why? listen, because, you know, what happens in menses when it's interchange of hormone, female hormone, and the male female hormone is the oestrogen. So That's why? the main, you know, you know, oestrogen is the main female hormone. And so, what happens in menses, all these things, is an interplay of those hormones, and the main one there is the oestrogen. And so that is why it's so important in uh, management. In fact, when we do medical treatment one of the things they will probably be given is anti-estrogen something against it mm. so what about low body mass index how does it uh, uh how does it, how does it that's how also the risk class that's factor? also a risk mm. factor. low body mass index yes there's no that because we don't know the direct causes some of the things it, that is believed is that if there is low body mass index, that means the person, the weight over height, it's low, less than what is expected, then there, this will affect the mm. oestrogen. And if it affects the oestrogen, then it has effect on the uh, endometriosis. Mm. You know, they say obesity too on its own has effect on oestrogen. Which may predispose to yeah, endometriosis. Yeah, yeah. What about the causes? Well, I, I was able to find one, two, three, four, five, six causes. There's no known cause. They are all, they are, they are all theories. So uh, you've told us about retrograde um, uh, menstruation yeah. Um, Genetics. What about immune system condition? How can that predispose to this condition? Yes, directly because they are all theories. Okay. 
the possibility is that naturally when something foreign gets to a wrong place the body immune system is expected to fight it so mm. you should not take so if there's a disorder from the immune, uh, immune system then it will not fight it mm. so with that that's why the lining stays where it's not supposed to be surgical um surgical scar complication or surgical scare complication how yes. does that predispose very good those okay. are also possibilities for example you did a surgery on the womb that's the uterus for example cs maometomy you know you get into the womb during this time you got access to the lining of course, <laughs> if you are to deliver a baby through CS, you, cut. you cut through the so this during this time the endometrial cells got attached to the scar. Hmm. That's a surgical scar. And of course, it can cause the symptoms because why is it endometriosis? Because that lining is outside where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's why it's endometriosis. You didn't tend to attack the question as to how it is being diagnosed and uh, yeah, yes, and we, yeah, 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 and yeah. procedures involved. A lot of things we can do straight away. Um, examination, pelvic examination. That might not be as diagnostic as possible, but you can tr do ultrasound, pelvic ultrasound, and of course MRI. Yes, do we, have, do we really have those machines? Uh, uh, ultrasound is available everywhere. MRI is not readily available and is very expensive. expensive. So, so which one is available for Nigerians? No, ultrasound is available and uh, and affordable. <laughs> available and affordable. So the ultrasound, because you mentioned uh, to a uh, test now, so which one do, would someone need to do both or the ultrasound is, can uh, uh, ultrasound be enough may, to diagnose yes, yes. from a from a from um, an experienced hand will be able to diagnose then you may have to do what we call laparoscopy what's that sir uh, is uh, you know telescope yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it, 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 it's a form of telescope for mm -hmm. it's used to do procedure. They probably take a little, it's a procedure, take a little incision, put hmm. that laparoscope into it. They are able to look from there, yeah. So they are, they will tell you, ah, no, ah, endometrial lining is. Oh, no wonder this person is having this pain. The endometrial lining is on the fallopian tube. Mm. The endome you are seeing it with, and with that, in fact, treatment can be done because you have seen it, and they try to get the, uh, that lining out of the abnormal. Pain. So, does it affect fertility? Mm. Of course, yes. Is there options to conceive? Huh? Or it why does it affect fertility? Let's find out first. No, because, you know, there is inflammation every time, you know, with the reaction of the endometrium. That's the lining of the uterus. Before you say I'm <laughs> speaking uh, grammar again. The lining of the uterus, mm. because if, for example, is on the fallopian tube, which is one of the commonest sites, what happens in the fallopian tube? There's, there, that's where fertilization happens, and that's where pregnancy starts, because that is where the male gamete, that's the sperm, and the female gamete, that's the egg or ovum, 
meet and it officially becomes baby there before it moves back moves back to the womb where it's now getting Attack. planted and start to grow and so because of the reaction on the tube there's inflammation that can cause the tube to block hmm. and so if the man is fertile and the woman is fertile, unfortunately, the male and female gamut is not meeting. There's no pregnancy. Well, for, for the sake of um, Ezekiel, we're going to take a break now, sooner than later. Um, so we can take coffee, take tea, and Ezekiel can lie down for <laughs> a few minutes <laughs> so he can regain his strength. We're going on our break, and when we return, our doctor will be concluding on the discussion this morning. Please stay with us. It is still Daybreak Africa, where we're taking a look at a very important topic called endometriosis. I hope I got it well. Our doctor is still here before we went on the break. He was explaining how um, this condition can actually predispose to infertility. And that was where he stopped. And we we'll really appreciate if we could continue on that note. Yes, as I was saying, the commonest place you find it is in the fallopian tube. And that's where fertilization occurs. And so once there's inflammation, there's tuba blockage. And so if we, if we go back to infertility, one of the causes is tuba blockage. Blocking. And so once there's blockage, the male and female gamma cannot meet. There's no pregnancy. There's nothing. Now, now before we go it. any further on um, uh, some of the risk, more risk factors that can come out from uh, this condition, are there different types? Because I was shocked while I was doing my research that there's something like grade one, grade two, grade three to grade four. Um, are there different types of no, endometriosis? Yes. It, it, when you talk about the stages like that, you are talking about the severity. Okay. Although some people still talk about probably superficial or deep. So different yes. from minimal to moderate to severe. Yes, yes. Okay. What they mean by superficial is, for example, if it's on the covering of the abdomen, which we call peristoneum, that is superficial. Then if it's in the deep organ, that is deep organ. Now, of course, the grading or staging is talking about how severe the condition is. Mm. So of course, grade one, virtually no symptom, to grade two, to grade three, of course, grade four is in the old map, hmm. very severe disease. The, there have been situations where women have had to take out their womb because of this condition. Yeah. Why? Is there no treatment for it? No. They'll willingly go and say, look, I just can't take it anymore. Doctor, please remove the womb. Remove it. Why? How? Because it is known that, in fact, it's not only removing the womb, they will also remove the ovaries. Thus, with that, that person is virtually Cured. Because I said majorly is on the fallopian tube, secondly on the ovaries. So if that is out, then the pain subside and that person here. But mind you, if that person has not completed or have not even started family, you know, that's a big challenge. And those are now the challenges that comes in. Even when you use hormonal therapy, of course, one of the managers we are already talking about treatment now, where 
you take care of pain. Pain management is so important in the management of endometriosis because they have severe pain. So pain management is one. Then we can work on the hormone. There's hormonal, hormonal therapy. Even using a popular combined oral contraceptive pills can mm. assist. Of course, there are other drugs that are uh, gonadotropin. They work on that because that's what influences uh, the ovaries to produce hormone, which have effect on the female reproductive organ. That's that. And of course, the third stage is surgery. It can be laparoscopy. It's minimal. Minimal, invasive. If just look, and if you pick it, the um, endometrial lining can be scraped out. Mm. Now, of course, your mark, if there's nothing to be done, of course, the womb and the ovary will be taken out. Mm. It, 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 it's good if, for example, if the person has completed the family size, you know, there's no problem to that. But what about those who have not even started making babies? babies? But th there's a situation on ground right now, a young girl of about 26, she's on social media, screaming her head away, and she's saying, look, she can't take it anymore that she needs the surgery, but her parents are against it, and now she's threatening to take her life. She's saying it's a life that she can't continue this way. She wants the surgery to remove because the doctors are told her that the only solution, apparently she has the severe case, that the only solution was that condition, and she's opting for that. Uh, what, 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 would, what advice do you have for such a person if she's watching right now? Come on, that person. She's 26. 26. She's an adult. She can make decision by herself. You see, I know somebody close to me who had something. When she's seen her period, three, four days, she'll be in the she cannot come out. That's the same situation yeah. I had. Yeah. For she four cannot. days, I won't go to school. I won't see anybody. I'll be locked up in the room crying. She cannot. Of course, ultrasound, everything pointed to adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is like endometriosis. But the difference is that the lining of the uterus is inside the muscles of the uterus. The lining hmm. is. So this one presents like a lot of people will think it's a fibroid. And so even ultrasound, if you are not experienced, we may think it is fibroid. You saw also come with the same symptom because the lining is not in the normal please. place. This one is inside the muscle of the womb. You know, for surgery, they tried removing, but eventually, even I was one of those people, and we were thinking, well, awful prayerful that she can. But at the time, she said she needs to get this womb out. And she did. And, and of course, she had not started having children. Having children. Now, there's a one in ten women of reproductive age, 15 to 49 years, is sick with endometriosis. 176 million women today suffer from the same that is a huge, that is yeah. a huge statistic. And we don't even diagnose, that's the problem. I tend to uh, wonder, you didn't really answer if there were options for women to conceive. No, if the, if the womb is out, 
There's no way she can conceive. Hmm. But if the womb is still intact, she could still conceive. Yes. The, it, it's still possible. It's still possible. But once the womb is out, then the person will probably be thinking of um, adoption. Adoption. So what lifestyle changes that could be adopted to manage the situation? How can someone manage, like the, the, the young lady we're talking about, if she eventually, please, the reality that someone hasn't started a family young and is predisposed to such a condition and the only solution at the end of the day is to remove the womb, knowing fully well, especially if that person loves to have children, have a large family, how do you, what do you say to those people? What kind of help can be given to such people? That kind of person will need psychological support. Psycho so we need to see a psychologist. Counsel, they need to work. This person must get prepared. You know, it's so easy, you know, it's easy when the pain is on. Mm -hmm. Are you getting my point? No, no, no. Get it out. Get it out. Get it. I don't need it. But when it's done, the reality don't. Uh, this is it. This is it. Oh, girl, you cannot have, have a baby. baby. Yeah, you, know, you know, that's another reality. Hmm. But you know, during the pain, one can say anything. You know, typically, when a lady is in labor, because of the pain, huh? Hmm. With our experience, they will be saying, This is the last. This time. is the I last. Will not, I will not. <laughs> In a year, they are back. They are back. Be because of that, because of the pain, you can say anything. <laughs> but the reality, when it does. So so please, let's thing. laugh a little. At least let me try and calm Ezekiel a little <laughs> because I know he hasn't experienced this. There was a situation where. I my my uncle's um, my uncle's wife was admitted at the hospital, so I just went to visit, just waiting for my uncle to come back. And a woman happened to be in labor when they were trying to pacify her. She was saying all kinds of things that I can't say on TV. But at that moment, the husband came in and she screamed, "That's the criminal! Uh, yes. Arrest him! <laughs> Police! Arrest the criminal! <laughs> Chair up!" You were, you were the one who said this topic was a family topic. I don't know. Now you're, you're just holding if your body together like maybe we're saying something that you never heard before. I'm trying to understand. Ezekiel, they fall my hand on TV. I'm trying to understand <laughs> that. I'm plus the technology this doctor has been using so far. Okay. I've not been using it. I've not been using it. Ezekiel is falling my hand, though. <laughs> Seriously. Let's talk about some of the common misconceptions. Because uh, <laughs> uh, she claimed to have... Uh, uh, endometriosis at some point, but you say it may not, not exactly be that. Since I got cured, yes, I didn't go for that. treatment. Yeah, yeah. So, what amongst this uh, could be other misconceptions people might <laughs> have? How could we actually uh, help dispel those conceptions or misconceptions, rather? You know, because endometriosis come comes with a painful menstruation, and so is. Every painful menstruation endometriosis. No. No. Okay. That you are a young lady, just started seeing menses because I have called it menarche. Uh, okay, <laughs> and I will be lost. I will be lost <laughs> once again. Yeah. Eh? And because you have painful menstruation, is that endometriosis? No. It may be, but most likely it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we must be able to differentiate between painful menstruation and endometriosis. And endometriosis. Of course, endometriosis is one of the causes of, of painful, painful menstruation. menstruation. What are the other symptoms? Uh, I, I discovered fatigue maybe some other symptoms and yeah. discover some other um, symptoms. Could you help us talk about other symptoms? Mainly when you talk about the pain linked to menses, then of course there can be abdominal, there can be fatigue, there can be abdominal symptoms, there can be uh, 
the person feel bloated. I used to have that yeah. then. There can be nausea. In fact, there can be vomiting too. And they can have premenstrual symptoms. They have pain. Before. Before. I used to have that too. So I will know that, oh, it has come in. My body changes they, completely. Yeah, yeah, of course, there can be severe low back ache. They can have pains on the lap, yes. on the thigh. Yes, I used to have that too. So of course, there can be Mine was a miracle, probably. Then again, no. Because again, <laughs> with normal, uh, what's it called? Primary dysmenorrhea. Painful message. We also have that. Those symptoms. Yes. So the only way I will be convinced that you had endometriosis is if we have had a diagnosis there. If you didn't have. One. Then number two, you did not have any treatment. Because my mom it said. It went on its own. Well, so that that's you used why, to have it. Well, except you think it's a miracle. So <laughs> obviously, obviously, I know this um, uh, disease tends to affect relationships. Now, for the male folks who are seated watching and are probably asking, how does this probably concern me? And I said earlier, it could be your sister, it could be your niece, it could be your daughter, maybe your even wife. the wife. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for the male folks seated, how can he provide support for, for, the, wife, for the wife, or for, for the, the child. daughter, or the sister? How best can the man support? Uh, the man needs to be there for uh, I, the, any of the ladies in her life having this condition by being there emotionally. Well, the emotionally she mentioned was turned to, or usually turned to curses and insults from her experience because she said when the labor was at some point and the woman was calling the husband criminal. So with that pain and that anger, just is it no, more like being emotional to accept no, no, all she has to offer no, violently? No, you see, uh, the case of labor pain is different. Okay. Now, you know, for example, somebody is down because of this, not able to do anything, virtually handicapped mm. at that time. You need to be there to support, understanding, showing empathy, understanding what this woman or this lady is going through. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by emotional support. Uh, if she can even tolerate food, I'm not sure mm -mm. she's able to even prepare that food. Mm, not even to eat it. Is that now the kind of time the man is saying, I want to take pounds in the hand? Mm. But some, some men would. Are you getting my point? <laughs> That's what I mean by being there emotionally. You, mm. She needs your support. You must understand what she is going, going through. through. You know, at times, support can help in pain management. Support can help in, in pain, pain management. management. Maybe like rubbing the back, Simple thing. rubbing I the hand, rubbing the legs. I need to know somebody is, somebody is there. For you, hmm. and of course, it, if it is severe to the extent, for example, that married couples five, six years no child, of course, the pressure again goes back on the man. Huh? But if the man is also there supporting, well, there are a lot of ways hmm. <laughs> that we can have our own children. If I, a child is adopted today, as that child, for example, has the rights, of course it's your child. Once it's established, you have adopted all legal papers signed, it's your child. So, you know, that kind of encouragement coming from a man to the woman, you know, as a way of suiting that kind of woman, you know, there's no problem. I'm going to stay by you. It's not that kind of time that you hear that the man has impregnated three, four people. <laughs> you know, the pain in, in for that woman will increase hundredfold. Hmm. That's what I mean by being there 
and for support him emotionally. Yeah. So let, um, as we begin to round up on our discussion, I was shocked to discover while I was researching that there could be complications that could come beside infertility. Um, could you explain more on complications that can uh, arise from endometriosis? You know, depending on where it is, if it's on the kidneys, it can affect the kidneys. And what does the kidney do? Get waste products out. So it can affect the function of the kidney because, because it's there, there's recurrent inflammation where it is. The same thing with the rectum. Because of recurrent inflammation can eventually lead to obstruction. Of course, the main thing everybody fear most, of course, is the infertility. Mm. Because in our environment, making babies uh, is important to our culture. Can you put this post to cancer? There's never in medicine. But once there are changes, we call it metaplasia. When it's, a cell is transforming, then of course there's a possibility. So at this point, what research is, is being done on carrying out to better understand this treatment? Because like you said earlier, everything is more like compounded in theories. Theories, yes. Not in no, 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 of course. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we need our scientists. <laughs> of course, I said we need our scientists. I'm not thinking about scientists in Nigeria. Why? <laughs> why? Are you saying we're not able to do research or none is being done right now that you are aware of in Nigeria? Well, well I'm not aware. But you need to look at the environment. Virtually everybody is leaving the country. Why is everybody leaving the country? There's something wrong. The brilliant, brilliant uh, ants are leaving. That you see a doctor or you see a scientist, a pharmacist today, tomorrow might, he might not be there. Do you have plans on leaving the country? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want to know. I want to know. Do you have plans? That was direct. Or leaving the country? <laughs> Do I? But you're really? here. Yeah, that's I, the point. I, I, that's I, 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 I am still here today. Only God can decide. To <laughs> but so what I'm saying is that, you know, if the environment is conducive for research. You know, talk, look at it. You talk about what's it called? When COVID was in Nigeria, was there any vaccine produced in Nigeria? I'm asking, no. Everything was donor driven. Listen, the medications we use in Nigeria, where are they from? Majorly from India, Pakistan. Go and look. So what's the problem? Is it that we don't have the, the minds to create a vaccine? The environment is not conducive to do it. What does that mean in layman no, terms? The government listen to research. You need a lot of a lot of funds and a lot a lot of things. You need materials, you need resources. The environment is not conducive for all these things. And so that's why, you see, scientists, so easy. Right. When an Oyebo man notice you are good, they get you out. And they, you even forget your name. <laughs> Dr. We want to appreciate you so much once again for being on the show this morning. Uh, the discussion has been quite enlightening, enlightening because for all my life, I usually, I actually thought probably it has always been behind my mind thinking, did I have this condition and did not even do any treatment? So I thank you so much for the understanding.
<laughs> well, it's been a wonderful uh, segment yeah. uh, so far here on Daybreak Africa. Yes. And at this point, we're going to call it a wrap until we see you same time tomorrow morning. You have a wonderful day. I remain Ezekiel Ogan. I am Anu Benitez. Stay safe and bye for now. <laughs>